never okay to prove a statement with just an example. Certainly, none of the statements proved in previous videos can be proved through an example. This is because in each of those cases, we were trying to prove that something holds for all integers. Hey everyone, real quick, I just wanna mention that this video is a part of a whole course that I made. You can find a link to this entire course in the description below and make sure to click on that subscribe button. We claim that n squared being even implies that n is even. No matter what integer n we pick, showing that this works for n equals 4 is not even close to enough. This cannot be stressed enough, though. If you are trying to prove a statement of the form for all x, p of x, you absolutely cannot prove this with an example especially specifically in discrete math if the um uni the universe for that variable that's being quantified is infinite however existential statements can be proven this way if we want to prove that there is an integer n such that for example n squared minus n plus 41 is not prime, all we need to do is find one. This might seem like a silly thing to want to prove until you find it, um, you know, some values for n. And in fact, I have a table here for you all. So n equals one, n squared minus n plus 41 is 41. If n equals two, it's 43. And 47, 53, 61, 71, 83. So far, we have gotten only primes. You might be tempted to conjecture for all positive integers n, the number n squared minus n plus 41 is prime. If you wanted to prove this, you would need to use a direct proof, a proof by contrapositive, or another style of proof, but certainly it is not enough to give even seven examples. In fact, we can prove this conjecture is false by proving its negation. There is a positive integer n such that n squared minus n plus 41 is not prime. Since this is an existential statement, it suffices to show that there does indeed exist such a number. In fact, we can quickly see that n equals 41 gives us 412, which is certainly not prime. You might say that this is a counterexample to the conjecture that n squared minus n plus 41 is always prime. Since so many statements in mathematics are universal, making their negations existential, we can often prove that a statement is false, if it is, by providing a counterexample. All right, let's do one together. All right, so the example that we're gonna be doing and this is from the textbook. We proved that for all integers a and b, if a plus b is odd, then a is odd or b is odd. Is the converse true? The converse is the statement for all integers a, and I'll actually write this out, for all integers a, for all integers a and b, if a is odd, or b is odd, then a plus b is odd. Well, this is false. How do we prove it is false? 
we need to prove the negation of this converse. Let's look at the symbols. The converse is for all A and for all B, A being odd, we'll use A, the big O for odd, A is odd, or B is odd, implies that A plus B is odd. We want to prove the negation, which is, in this case, um, just put a little negation there. There we go. We want to prove that this is true. Simplifying using the rules from the previous videos that we've discussed, this means that there exists an A and there exists a B such that A is odd or B is odd and A plus B is not odd. As the negation passed by the quantifiers, they changed from for all or universal to um, there exists, which is existential. We then needed to take the negation of an implication, which is equivalent to asserting the if part and not the then part. Now we know what to do. To prove that the converse is false, we need to find two integers, a and b, so that a is odd or b is odd, but a plus b is not odd, so even. That's easy. One and three. Remember, or means one or the other or both. Both of these are odd, but one plus three equals four, which is not odd. Anyways, thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.